Welcome back everyone to the deep dive. This time we're diving deep into Sylvia's latest article all about employee experience design. EX. Yeah, EX design. We're gonna unpack all the key ideas and what they mean for you as a listener. Awesome. So, you know, you might be thinking, yeah. wait a minute, isn't this just HR with like a fancy new name? Right. But EX is so much more than just rebranding. It really is. It's a complete shift. Yeah, it's a fundamental shift in how we think about people and companies. Yeah. Um, and it's really taking inspiration from the hospitality industry. Okay. Like hotels and restaurants, how they create those amazing guest experiences. Yeah. EX Design wants to bring that same intentionality to the employee journey. It's really interesting how they're applying that. Right. And, you know, the article makes a really great point about starting with a simple question. Yeah. How do we want our employees to feel? Yeah. So it's kind of like reverse engineering that whole employee experience to create those desired feelings. Mm, absolutely. It's about intentionally setting standards for the employee experience. And that raises an important question for CEOs and CHROs. Okay. Do you have the right environment to help you achieve your business goals? That's interesting. Do your company's leaders have that kind of environment? Ooh, right. Because EX argues that the employee experience is directly linked to those goals. Absolutely. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Right. Let's take a step back and talk about why this whole EX thing is even necessary. Okay. Sylvia points out that traditional HR practices, you know, they kind of often struggle to keep up with all the evolving needs of today's workforce. They do. And that can lead to some pretty significant consequences. Yeah. Things like high turnover rates, low productivity, yep. and a lack of motivation among employees. Absolutely. These are all challenges that companies are dealing with right now. Absolutely. And, you know, the article points out that ignoring these evolving needs can directly hit a company's bottom line. For sure. It's not just about keeping employees happy anymore. No. It's about creating a work environment that actually drives business success. 100%. That's a crucial point. And it goes back to what we were saying about setting those standards for the employee experience. Yep. It's not just about the needs of HR, but aligning those with the overall goals of the organization. So how does EX Design actually tackle these challenges? It starts with taking a holistic view of the entire employee life cycle. Okay. We're talking every touch point. From the moment a potential candidate applies for a job, oh, wow. all the way through to their very last day with the company. So it's not just focusing on one specific area, no, like onboarding or performance reviews. It's looking at the big picture. Exactly. At each stage, EX focuses on crafting a positive and enriching experience. Okay. Making sure that every interaction an employee has contributes to their sense of well-being and engagement. That makes sense. But, you know, let's be honest. Yeah. There are a lot of companies out there that try to create a fun work environment with those kind of like superficial perks. Right. You know, ping pong tables, free snacks. Sure. Is EX really any different from that? It's completely different. Okay. Those perks are nice. Yeah. But they don't really address the deeper issues that are impacting the employee experience. Right. EX is about creating a culture where people feel valued, respected, and empowered. I see. It's about giving them the tools and resources that they need to do their best work uh, yeah. and supporting them in their professional growth. So it's about creating a truly supportive environment. Yeah. Not just trying to mask those problems with surface level perks. Exactly. And to really address those problems, you have to know where they're coming from. Okay. Do you know which part of your employee's journey is responsible for high turnover? Interesting. Is it a clunky onboarding process? Yeah. Lack of development opportunities? Yeah. Or something else entirely? EX encourages companies to really look at the employee journey and pinpoint those areas that need the most attention. So it's about getting to the root of the issue. Exactly. Not just treating those symptoms. Well, 100%. And once you understand the root cause, you can start to design solutions that really address the problem and create a more positive experience for everyone. This is starting to sound really intriguing, but how do we know that this stuff actually works? Right. Are there companies out there that are already seeing success with EX design? Absolutely. Yeah. There are some big names who are already reaping the benefits of embracing EX companies like Airbnb, ING, Philippines, Airlines, and NatWest are all great examples. Okay, now I'm really interested. Let's dive into some of those examples and see what kind of impact EX is having in the real world. Let's do it. So let's start with NatWest. They've managed to save over 385,000 employee hours in 2024 alone. Whoa. 
just by streamlining processes through EX. And get this, they're projected to save over 820,000 hours in 2025. That is a massive amount of time. What does that translate to, like, in practical terms? Well, think about it. Increased efficiency, lower costs, and more time for employees to focus on the meaningful work. Right. They've also seen a 64% average first-time resolution rate for HR queries. And in some areas, it's as high as 80%. That must be such a relief for both employees and HR. Exactly. No more getting lost in a maze of red tape. Yeah. It frees up everyone to focus on that more strategic and impactful work right and creates a smoother less frustrating experience for everyone involved so natwist is seeing some pretty serious efficiency gains what about ing ing focused on revamping their onboarding process oh, wow. and they saw a 24 percent increase in employee satisfaction just from that onboarding is so important it is. Like a bad first impression can really set a negative tone for an employee's entire experience with the company. 100%. And actually, during their EX design process, ING discovered that their old onboarding process was wasting a massive amount of time, like 116,000 hours. Oh, my gosh. 116,000 hours of wasted time. It's crazy. What kind of financial impact did that have? It was costing them about 8 million euros. Wow. But even more importantly, it impacted new hires' sense of empowerment and their ability to really contribute effectively. They weren't getting the support they needed to really hit the ground running. All right. So by implementing EX principles, they not only improved the onboarding experience itself, right. but they gave managers the tools to really support new employees through those first few months. That's a great example of how a really well-designed onboarding process can save money and boost employee satisfaction at the same time. Absolutely. So we've got NatWest, streamlining processes, ING revamping onboarding. What about Airbnb? Airbnb took a really interesting approach. Okay. They merged multiple departments like talent recruiting and company culture okay. into one big employee experience group. That's a bold move. Yeah. It seems like they're really trying to break down those traditional silos. They are. And create a more unified approach to the employee experience. Exactly. They recognize that all of these areas are super interconnected right. and really contribute to the overall employee journey. Hmm. And to make sure that everyone was aligned with the company values, they even changed their hiring process. Candidates are now interviewed twice. Okay specifically to assess their fit with Airbnb's core values. So they're serious about finding people who are not just skilled, but also a good cultural fit? Yeah. I bet that had a positive impact on employee satisfaction. For sure. Their employee satisfaction actually increased by 32% after implementing these changes. 32%? That's huge. It is. Did Sylvie include any quotes about Airbnb's philosophy on EX? She did. Mark Levy, their former global head of employee experience, said, anything that sets employees up for success or improves our culture should be part of EX. I love that quote. It really highlights how EX isn't about you know, those superficial perks yeah. or trying to be like the cool company. Yeah. It's about creating an environment where people feel valued, supported, and empowered to do their best work. Exactly. And it sounds like that approach is paying off for Airbnb in a big way. It is. And it's not just anecdotal evidence. There's research to back this up. Oh, really? Yeah. Jacob Morgan, author of The Employee Experience Advantage, found a strong correlation between companies that invest heavily in EX and some really impressive outcomes. This is where it gets interesting. What did Morgan's research reveal? Well, his research showed that companies that prioritize EX okay. are much more likely to be featured on those best places to work lists, okay. like Glassdoor and LinkedIn's top employers. Yeah. They were also more likely to be recognized for their innovation. Interesting. So appearing on lists like Fast Company's Most Innovative Companies. So happier employees lead to a more innovative company. Oh, it seems that way. Fascinating. It sounds like investing in your people can actually give you a competitive edge. It really can. And it goes beyond innovation. Morgan also found a strong correlation between EX investment and higher customer satisfaction. Wait, investing in employees leads to happier customers. It really does. Happy, yeah. engaged employees are more likely to provide great customer service. Right. Which, of course, leads to happier customers. That's a win-win for everyone involved. It is. So we're talking happier employees happier customers. Mm -hmm. But what about the bottom line? Does investing in EX actually lead to financial success? The research suggests that it does. Companies that prioritize EX tend to have four times the average profit and two times the average revenue. That's amazing. It is. So we're not just talking about feel-good initiatives here. We're talking about a real impact on a company's financial performance. Absolutely. 
And there's one more interesting finding from Morgan's research. Yeah. Companies that invest heavily in EX tend to be 25% smaller. Smaller. Does that mean they have fewer employees? It could mean that, but it also suggests that they're operating more efficiently. I see. They're able to achieve the same results with fewer resources because their employees are more engaged, productive, and empowered. So it's not just about growing bigger. It's about becoming more efficient and effective. Exactly. And that's a key takeaway from all of this research. Wow. Investing in EX isn't just about making employees happy. Right. It's about creating a more successful and sustainable business overall. This is really eye-opening. It sounds like EX is much more than just a trend. It's like a fundamental shift in how we think about the role of employees. It is. But let's bring it back to our listeners. What does all of this mean for them? It raises a good question, Oler. If these results were possible in your company, what would change? Yeah. What kind of impact would you have by championing EX? What would happen if you started asking those tough questions about your company culture and employee experience? That's a great question for our listeners to think about. Yeah. It challenges all of us to think differently about the way we work and to help them dive a little deeper. Let's explore Sylvia's seven key areas for designing an effective EX strategy. So these seven areas, they basically provide like a roadmap right. for companies looking to create a truly exceptional employee experience. Exactly. And Sylvia starts right at the beginning, you know, recruitment and onboarding. Yeah, it makes sense to start there. Those first impressions are so important. Mm. They can really shape an employee's whole perception of the company. You know, a clunky application process or a disorganized onboarding experience can send the wrong message right away. It's like a first date. Right. You want to make sure the candidate feels valued and excited about the opportunity. Absolutely. So what does a good EX-driven recruitment and onboarding process look like? Well, transparency is key. Okay. Be upfront about your company culture, the values and expectations, don't try to sugarcoat things right. or present like an unrealistic picture of what it's like to work there. Honesty is the best policy. Exactly. People people can spot a fake a mile away. Yeah. And it's not just about what you say. It's about how you say it. Okay. Make the application process smooth and user-friendly. Right. No one wants to jump through hoops and fill out a million forms. And then once someone is hired, onboarding is just as important. Oh, yeah. You want to make sure that new hires feel welcomed and supported. Of course. And, you know, prepared to succeed in their new roles. It should be more than just paperwork and introductions. It's about creating a personalized and engaging experience that helps new hires integrate into the company culture. Okay. Understand their role and responsibilities. It sounds like a lot of thought and effort goes into designing an effective onboarding program. It does, but it's an investment that pays off. Yeah. When employees feel supported from the very beginning, right. they're more likely to be engaged, productive, and loyal to the company. Okay, so we've covered recruitment, onboarding, what comes next in Sylvia's framework. So once an employee is settled into their role, it's time to focus on their development okay. and career growth. Right. Providing opportunities for training, mentorship, and advancement within the company. And this is where things like performance management, right. learning and development programs, and mentorship come into play. Exactly. How does EX change the way we approach these things? Well, it's about creating a culture of continuous learning and growth, okay. empowering employees to really take ownership of their development right. and provide them with the resources and support to achieve their professional goals. So it's not just about those annual performance reviews and mandatory training sessions. Yeah. No. It's about creating a more personalized and engaging approach. Exactly, like offering tailored learning paths. Okay. Providing access to online courses, workshops, yeah. creating opportunities for mentorship and coaching. I see. It's about recognizing that each employee has their own unique needs and aspirations. Right. And tailoring their development plan accordingly. And also recognizing and rewarding employees for their contributions and achievements. Yes. When people feel valued and appreciated, yeah. they're more likely to be motivated. Absolutely. And engaged in their work. Positive reinforcement goes a long way. Yeah. It creates that positive feedback loop we were talking about. Uh -huh. Employees feel good about their work, which leads to better performance, right. better outcomes for the company. So we've talked about recruitment, onboarding, ongoing development. What other stages in the employee life cycle does Sylvia highlight? So as employees progress in their careers, 
they might start looking for new challenges or opportunities. Okay. That's where internal mobility and promotion processes come in. Right. A good EX strategy focuses on promoting from within. Yeah. Providing clear pathways for growth. It makes sense to prioritize internal talent. It does. Give them opportunities to grow within the company. Exactly. Rather than always looking externally. It shows employees that you're invested in them yeah. and you see them as valuable assets. Mm -hmm. And an EX approach to internal mobility focuses on creating a transparent and equitable process okay. for promotions and lateral moves. So employees need to understand how it works. Yes. The criteria for advancement. Right. And they need to trust that it's fair. Exactly. It's about removing any ambiguity or mystery surrounding promotions. Okay. And giving employees a clear understanding of what they need to do to advance their careers. We've covered a lot here from recruitment and onboarding oh. all the way to career development and internal mobility. We. Are there any other areas that Sylvia highlights in this framework? The last stage Sylvia emphasizes is offboarding. Okay. It might seem counterintuitive to focus on employees who are leaving, right? but the offboarding experience can have a big impact yeah. on both the departing employee and the company. It's easy to overlook offboarding. It is. But it's that last impression an employee has of the company. Right. It can really leave a lasting impact. An EX approach to offboarding is about treating departing employees with respect. Okay. Providing them with support they need to transition. Right. And gathering feedback to learn from their experience. So it's more than just collecting their badge and laptop. Exactly. Like. Last day. It's about recognizing their contributions. Yeah. And making sure that they leave on good terms. And it's a valuable opportunity to get feedback. It is. That can help the company improve its EX. Right. For future employees. Even if an employee is leaving, their feedback can be super insightful. It sounds like EX really is about creating a positive and thoughtful experience for employees it is at every stage every single stage even when that journey is coming to an end exactly and recognizing that employees are human beings yeah with needs aspirations and the potential to make a contribution to the company it's been a really fascinating deep dive into sylvia's article on employee experience design we explored the reasons why EX is becoming so important. We did. We saw real world examples of companies that are seeing the benefits. Yeah. And we delved into those seven key areas for creating an effective EX strategy. It's clear that EX is not just a buzzword. Yeah. It's a fundamental shift in how we think about employees. And as Sylvia's article shows, investing in employee experience is investing in the long-term success of any company. Absolutely. Yeah. And the best part is you don't have to overhaul everything overnight. Right. Start by focusing on one area you think could be improved yeah. and go from there. Even small changes can make a big difference. That's really great advice. So to our listeners, we encourage you to take what you've learned today yeah. and start thinking about how you can apply these principles to your own organization. Absolutely. Whether you're a CEO, a manager, or an individual contributor, right? you have the power to make a positive impact on the employee experience. And who knows? You might discover that a little focus on EX can lead to some amazing results. That's right. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into employee experience design. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time.